problem. <laughs> so, I mean, you can do a bad job. That's one option, right? I mean, just give it the instruction sequence that comes out and live with it. But then trying to determine uh, what is the minimum instruction cycle count, um, that's a much different game. Uh, modern compilers do a pretty good job at this, um, especially with what we call straight line code. So code without the presence of any other branches or anything. Um, it can do a really good job of this, optimal view. Beyond straight line code, it becomes much more challenging. Okay, so we described data hazards, we've described forwarding, we've described the load use delay, we've described how you can hopefully identify independent instructions to fill those cycle slots. We're almost there. So to bring, kind of wrap it all together, uh, let's show the um, real complexity or the real uh, pipelining implementation of the Raspberry Pi. Okay. Last piece. So the Raspberry Pi doesn't have five stages, it has eight stages. Okay. So let's recap what those eight stages are. We have batch one, batch two, decode, start with a squeaking pin, register read. These are the common four stages for all instruction types. At this point, uh, the designers of the Raspberry Pi decided to, um, it's actually the designers of the Broadcom chip that the Raspberry Pi uses, uh, decided to uh, diverge the pipeline. So we have kind of two different paths. We have the shift ALU saturation. Okay. These are for uh, the ALU instruction types. So have the address one and then two. These are for the memory type instructions. What is after ALU? Saturation. What is saturation? Uh, this is a special case where we don't want uh, overflow to occur with uh, values. So max int plus 10, the output of the saturation stage would give you max int as opposed to some overflow value. And then um, the eighth stage is there's a common write back. Or we could think of it as a common write back. So this is for address generation. So in the previous example, this would be doing the stack pointer plus four, for instance. Okay, so at this point now, I'm finally referring to notes because I always get these, um, well, I don't want to make mistakes. Uh, so this is in the ARM 1176 manual, specifically section 16-1. Now, 
they gave a specific example and what the associated cycle timings are for that uh, instruction sequence. So, example one. So this is the classic load use delay, and it looks very similar to what we've just shown up here. It's an add instruction instead of a sub instruction. Now, before I describe what the um, uh, number of cycles are for this, let me describe what they have implemented in terms of forwarding for this uh, processor. Okay. So I'm reading this directly from this. Um, Forwarding to the following stages is present. Okay. We can forward to the shift stage. We can forward to the address generation stage. We can forward to the ALU stage. We can forward to the MEM1 stage. So my legend is this arrow means forward to. Okay. As far as where we can forward from, output from the ALU stage, the saturation stage, and the write back stage. And so this arrow means Why would you need to forward from write back? Wouldn't that already be in the register? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, I think the reason is that there isn't a direct path of input to some of these. They may have, may have less extensive. Um, oh, so they might not have access to like the registers. That's right. That's right. Okay. So we have to forward it from somewhere in the data path at that point. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I've shown a bunch of lines here, right? Um, the part that isn't clear that I, I want to make sure that uh, we, we do talk about or at least mention is that each of these forward from stages is connected to each of these incoming forward in, forward to stages. So, as an example, I can forward from the ALU back to the ALU or to the MEM stage or to the address stage or to the shift stage. So this outgoing arrow fans out to all four of these incoming ones. The same is true here and the same is true here. So it's a complete connection from all these outputs to all of these inputs. Lots of multiplexers, right? Following on from Laura's question, forwarding from the right back, does that mean that there is, is, is there like a buffer or does it just directly forward from the right back? Uh, you might think of it as that while it's writing it back to the register, it's simultaneously also passing it to the stage in the pipeline that needs it. Okay, now, here's the part where things start to get a little bit tricky to follow, okay, the actual cycle timings. The ARM manual says that this sequence takes four cycles. So what's happening? If we, okay, what that means is that it, from the beginning of when this actually starts to do useful work to when the result of the add instruction is available. Okay, that means that I could then send R3 to something 
either to the register file or to another subsequent instruction through forwarding. Okay, so it's the total latency for both of these instructions from the result perspective. How long does it take before R3 becomes available? Okay. Now, you think, well, hold on, there's an eight-stage pipeline. How can it only take four cycles? Okay. Well, the answer is it doesn't count any of this stuff here. So, here's how this works. The load actually starts the load operation when it's in this MEM1 stage here. And this is when it actually begins fetching the results of the address pointed to by whatever these brackets. Okay. At that point, the add instruction is still sitting up here in the shift stage, not doing anything happy, moving along. Okay. So, we move the forward, we move the load forward. It takes one cycle to get to here. It takes another cycle to get to here. At this point now, we have the result, but there's no forwarding here. Okay. So, one, two, three. Now we can forward it. Now the ad has been sitting in this ALU stage waiting for its inputs. It takes one more cycle, and now R3, the sum of the add instruction, is available. So, I'll repeat it. There's been no dependency, no hazard has occurred until we have the load going into the memory stage. Everything's flowing smoothly up until that point. So the load is in the mem stage, the add is in the shift stage. One clock cycle later, they both move forward. Right? Now this, this one has to wait. Its result isn't ready. That was one clock cycle. But then we have two clock cycles, three clock cycles. The forward occurs, the fourth clock cycle, R3 is ready. Yes. So how does it get to shift and mem in zero cycles? Uh, it doesn't get there in zero cycles, but um, this part of the pipeline is not going to be impacted by data hazards. But it will take more than four cycles to run forward. It will, but we don't. Uh, this is part of that case of ignoring the fill cost. OK. There's something here, right, when the others are moving forward. And there's something here, and there's something here, and there's something here. Um, so those are clipping along just like they should. So it's not from, okay, so the four cycles is not measured from the first fetch, but when we first run into data. Thank you, yeah. So the, cool. the, we don't start counting until the load hits the mem stage, the first mem stage. So now, here's the good news. If, um, if you forget what I just said, that this is four cycles, just go ahead and check um, section 16.1 of the R manual. And it's written down, OK? Um, let me show another one. We're close, I promise. OK. Thanks, work. I have the exact same sequence, but with this extra little kicker at the end. Okay. What that little uh, section means shift stage of the pipeline. 
So semantically, what this uh, instruction does, ignoring the load for now, is it says, take R1, shift it left by one, use that result as the input with R3 to do the sum and put the result back in R3. This type of instruction is used for pointer arithmetic. Now, what that means, as in the previous example, we said, okay, the load is here and the add is here. Now the add has to wait at this point, right? Because we need the result in R1 is what we want to shift. So, add here, load here. The load advances, there's one. The load advances, there's two load advances, there's three. The forward occurs. We shift 